with all the body of Christ. So again, thank you. And uh, should I increase my volume? Okay. All right. I wish you could hear me and pray that uh, everything is set. So again, we are here. We are thankful. We are so grateful for everyone who are faithfully sharing this program and who is always uh, on the go and alert when they want to watch this program with their family, with your friends. And please, again, respond, share, make a comment. Uh, that's the only way uh, we could know that you are there by giving a comment or, or a blessing or a prayer request even. And thank you so much. So again, uh, by the way, happy birthday to bro brother Kevin Banyares. And uh, today is his birthday. And Noelito Hablo, Pastor Hablo, uh, happy birthday po. And uh, again, next week we'll be greeting some more people. Uh, Ana Casay, Aida Ramos, Janeline Marcelo. I'm doing it now. Daniel Padua, Janet Gonzalez. And uh, anniversary, Hazel and Aldo Rey Taneo. So I did it in case uh, I might forget it this coming week. Every birthday is important. Every anniversary is a blessing. Uh, from God. As we uh, continue with our series, I'd like to share with you um, another item on the subject of uh, Can God. Every Sunday, now that is our uh, the theme of our series, the ability of God, what can God do, and uh, every Friday we are on the book of Proverbs. So, here we are. Uh, I, I believe the past few Sundays, we've talked on this subject. Can God use your life? We answered that. And can God, <clears throat> uh, can God uh, meet your needs? Those were the subjects before. And, and with all those uh, ending of the sermon, we always end up with, yes, God can. God can. And that is the theme we have. Can God? God can. And uh, this morning, we are going to deal with another subject, can God, and this is regarding, can God heal your sickness? Can God heal your sickness? Now, before we continue, the reason this is very important is this. We just had a prayer time, and every Friday, we we, we uh, mentioned by name every every person listed on our prayer list. Do you know that the majority, if not 80%, at least 75% of every prayer list that we have is about sickness. It's either about cancer, stroke, COVID, uh, anything under the sun that covers the word sickness. And not only our church. One time, I believe a few few few. Uh, years back i asked some pastors i said specifically pastors in your list of prayer concerns what is the majority of concerns that you have and they all said the same thing either cancer sickness healing so this is a uh, uh something that we must learn what the word of god is saying about healing our sickness so the question now that we want to answer this morning is 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 not just can God heal your sickness because we know God is powerful that's why he is called Almighty all-powerful because nothing is impossible with him and that even every sickness to be an Almighty God you have should have the ability to heal all and every sickness so the question is not a matter of can god the question is the matter of will god the question can god is a matter of a question of his, does he have the ability the answer is yes now will god this now tackles the idea of of will he uh, uh will he do it what's his purpose Will he heal? Is it his purpose to heal you or not answer your prayer? So that is what we will answer. Now, as we uh, before we begin, I'd like to, to lay down some basic foundations. 
that we already know or maybe that you need to understand. Number one, God can miraculously heal all sickness. If so, it in the Bible. Uh, you know, uh, everything He can do because He is God. Okay? Now, the next thing is this. God can use doctors and medicines. God can use your chemo. God can use your radiation. God can use the vaccine. Now, no medicine is perfect. And no medicine or chemo or radiation or vaccine can heal all and 100%. That cannot be. Because there are ma- many other underlying uh, circumstances. And also, a vaccine is made by man. All c- chemo is made by man. And man can always make mistake. Why? Because they are not God. Alright? The next uh, foundation I'd like to lay is this. God's sovereign will will always prevail. Whether he uses medicine, whether he just uses the power of prayer without medicine or chemo, and he could raise a person from sickness, it's all based on his will, on his prevailing will, sovereign will. And if he doesn't allow you to be, to be healed, it's also according to his sovereign will. So, another thing I'd like to share with you before we, this is just an introduction, is this. You can be right with God and still be sick. Some people may, may think, oh, the reason you, you're not sick, pastor, is because you're a pastor. You're, all, you're powerful in prayer. You're, all, you're close to God. That is not the reason we're not sick. The reason we're not sick is because either the time is not yet for us, and the purpose of God uh, wants us not to get sick. And if we do get sick, again, the same principle applies. If God allows us to be healed, praise God. If God doesn't allow us to be healed, praise God. Because of the sovereign will of God. We've seen this in many portions of the Bible. Okay? Uh, Trophimus. Uh, uh, Paul said, I left Trophimus in Miletus sick. Uh, uh, he advised, the Apostle Paul advised uh, Timothy, you know, take a little a wine for your stomach for your frequent infirmities. So even Timothy, a godly man, gets sick. Even in the Old Testament, Elisha became sick with the illness of which he would die. The Apostle Paul himself said, I have this thorn in the flesh. I, I, am, I have this infirmity. I have this, this, this ailment that, that, that becomes a thorn in my flesh and, and God would not remove it. I prayed three times fervently. So, to understand what is healing all about, you must understand one thing. That we are composed of, of, of three Items or three elements, or whatever you might call it. The Bible said this. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your, guess what? The Bible said, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are a tripartite being. What you see now is my body, the, the one that uh, I dress, the one that I comb every morning. That's my body. Uh, uh, but also I have a soul. The soul is my personality. That's my, way, that's my mind, uh, my, my emotion. The one, the one that, that uh, get, uh, have emotions, whether anger or love or whatever. That's, that's, that's me, part of me. And also my will. And there's also my spirit. I, I, I must spiritual being every person in this life was born with their spirit dead because of sin and that's why when you receive jesus christ as savior when you believe in christ as your savior then your spirit becomes alive as the bible said okay he quickens your spirit because the holy spirit of god dwells within that spirit that's a quick uh, uh, study of, of the reason because when people pray Usually, we just think of our body. Lord, this, this virus attacks your lungs. That's your body. Cancer attacks what your brain or whatever part of the body that has cancer. That's your body. Alright? So now, remember this. 
Jesus healed people during the time that he was on earth. But guess what? All who were healed by Jesus died. But all who believed in Jesus are still living. Why? Because those people that Jesus healed the body, later on, they die. Where are they now? But those that believe in Jesus before and even now are still living, even if they are not anymore with you. That's why Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. So in actuality, you never really die, uh, in a sense, uh, because you are never separated from God. Now, there is no such thing as a perfect health, nor perfect healing, because we are not perfect beings. The moment Adam and Eve sinned in paradise, and they were thrown out of paradise, every man born as a body that is dying every day. All right? But what we need is not perfect health. What we need is total health. Uh, uh, the the um, Bill Gothard and, and the book uh, Institute uh, for Basic Life Principles are the one who, who shared this. Okay, I'm just sharing this with you. Total health. What is total health? Total health is fulfilling the number of years for which God designed us to serve Him. That's total health. And the quality of life. We need to carry out the work that He has created us to accomplish. So it's not a matter of how healthy you are or, or you have all your faculties with you. People that are not as healthy as we are has been used mightily by God. That's their total health. Enough health for them to accomplish what God has purposed for them to accomplish. So, the question is, how about you? Do you have total health? Do not pray that, that I mean, the Apostle Paul did not have perfect health, but he had enough health. The thorns were there, but he had enough health remaining to accomplish the great work of God that was given to him. And he did. And he was able to finish the race with whatever health he has. Okay, I have finished my course, he said. I have finished the race. So, here's the question. If you were told today that you have a terminal disease, if you were told today by your doctor or by someone and say, you have a few days to live because of your sickness, what reason would you give God for keeping you alive? What reason would you give God to keep you alive? I'll give you an example. In the Old Testament, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 20, there's a king named Hezekiah. And Hezekiah was given a death sentence by his sickness. The Lord said, set your house, Hezekiah, because set it in order because you shall die and not live. <laughs> Just imagine, that's a, a bad dream. I don't know, that, that, that's the saddest news that you could ever have in your life sir just to let you know you have one day to live you have one day to live and we should have told you yesterday and we should have told you yesterday sad right and what did Hezekiah do he he prayed intensely to God and said remember now O Lord I pray how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight now, what was Hezekiah doing? He was making an appeal to God to extend his life. And the reason he gave was this, Lord, you know I've been faithful to you. I've been doing what is right. I've walked in truth all the days, and you know that, Lord. So what he's actually saying this, Lord, if you just allow me to, to extend my life, I will be doing the same things. So he made an appeal to God, and guess what? God answered his prayer. Verse 5 said, I have answered, I've heard your prayer, Hezekiah. I have, been, I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. And in fact, the next verse said, the verse said and I will add to your days 15 years. 15 years. Amazing. So here is a man who appealed to God. He gave a reason to God. 
My question is for you, what will be your reason for God to extend your life? Will you say, Oh Lord, please extend my life because I want to live the same foolish life I've been living. Oh Lord, please spare my life and extend my life because I want to commit on I want to continue committing this sin, this adultery, this, this lie that I'm doing with my life. Lord, continue to extend my life so I could continue mocking your word, mocking your work, mocking your workers. You think God would answer those kind of prayers? No. Lord, heal me so I could continue disobeying your word and your commands. That's what I'm saying. When we pray for someone, when we pray, when a person asks us to pray for them so that their life will be extended, so that this dreadful uh, terminal disease will be, will be gone, there must be a reason we give to God for healing that person. Another verse is when King David, in his old age, said this to God, O God, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous works. Now also, when I am old and gray-headed, O God, do not forsake me, until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. The testimony of, of our member Marvin earlier simply says this, Lord, if you will heal me, heal me so that you can use me. That's what it is. God will not just heal you for the sake of healing you. God will not just answer your prayer of healing just for the sake of being able to answer. There must be a reason. There must be a reason. And you must use discernment because there are reasons for our sickness. There are reasons why you get sick. Well, first of all, that sickness could be because you have disobeyed God. You have lived a, a you know, foolish Christian life and God would chastise you because He loves you so much. Remember, the Bible said, Whom the Lord loves... He chastens or He corrects or He disciplines. Chastisement is a part of God's love. And because God doesn't want you to continue with your foolish ways, He has to correct you. He has to wake you up. And sometimes He used those sickness, those events in our lives, even the loss of money, even, even the loss of a loved one, just to teach us to correct our ways. Or sometimes there's what we call sickness, and this sickness is the very reason how God can take us home. If you're a believer, you know you are a Christian. You know that you have eternal life in Christ. And you know where you will spend eternity if you die. So you're not actually afraid to die because you don't know where you're going. But actually, sickness is an instrument by God to take you home. Even those people that preaches or teaches that they have a gift of healing. Believe me, most of them, oh, all of them died too. And guess what? They all got sick and they died of that sickness. So what we are saying is that sometimes sickness is allowed by God to take us home to be with Him in glory. Because if nobody on earth gets sick, then people that are evil will still be living today. And guess what? I don't want to have Hitler living for eternity. I don't want to have a people uh, you know, that are evil roaming this earth. I'm saying it's a tool of God to take us home. Not only that, sickness unto fruitfulness. Sometimes God allows sickness so that we could be more fruitful in our lives. I just, the other day, watched uh, uh, Johnny Erickson do you know she had COVID too? And then she made that video and she said, I, I don't know if I'll recover from this COVID, but God has been so good. And guess what? Her ministry is being used by the Lord. And she was paralyzed on her youth. Remember when she had that accident? She was paralyzed. And I've been giving you Nick uh, uh Fanny Crosby, and all the men and women of God, children of God that have ailments. 
that are that have frailties that have diseases that have sickness but was more fruitful because of that and finally there's a sickness that God used to glorify God to glorify God so in all these things we could learn several items okay? we can learn several principles number one power may come through suffering and sickness sometimes when you're so strong and okay and so healthy sometimes that could even be your greatest weakness that could be the cause of your downfall when everything is going smoothly in our life sometimes that's when we become careless we become proud uh, you know we become uh, so uh, insensitive to what God wants we disobey God so what happened was your supposed strength have now become your weakness but there are also times that 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 your greatest your weakness may be your greatest strength the item the thing that you may it be poverty physical weakness whatever that quote and unquote weakness would be but that was used by God to make you the kind of person he wants you to be so not all strength are strength and not all weakness are weakness but sometimes God allows sickness to give you the power the Bible said when Paul remember I mentioned Apostle Paul this is God's answer to him this was God's answer to him when he was asking for the thorns in the flesh to be removed God said my grace is sufficient for you because when you are weak then you are strong then I could give you my strength so what did Paul say he said therefore I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches in needs Thank you for persecutions. Thank you for distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So, power may come through your sickness and weakness. Not only that, so that productivity may come through suffering and sickness. The more you'll become productive. I remember the Apostle Paul said this to the people in Corinth. Now if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation so that we would not trust ourselves but we would trust God so it was a benefit for them that Paul was afflicted and affliction is any adversity even sickness even any crisis uh, that happens in your life it has a purpose and it to make you fruitful to make you fruitful remember um, John 15 verse 2 Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he makes, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, guess what? He prunes that it may bear more fruit. Wow, what a principle. You know that pruning process to a, to a, uh, 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 to a you know, fruit-bearing tree is very important. The same way with a believer, God uses pruning meaning removing things that are just just a hindrance for the you know for the water to flourish in, in, in the stem the pruning may be anything that God would remove to, to, to humble you so that you'll be humbled to remove your pride to me to remove your your, your self-sufficiency to remove your self-confidence so that God will be your confidence those are pruning process it can be sickness it can be a uh, loss of job it could be a uh, loss of property pruning process is very important why to make you more productive to make you more fruitful not only that purity may come through suffering and sickness purity what do you mean purity pastor there's an example in the bible that says this for whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourge every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? And then it, 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 it continues with this. For they indeed for a few days chastened us. That seemed best for them. But he, God, for our profit, that we may be partakers 
of His holiness. Wow! So that we could be holy, sanctified. So purity means for us to grow in grace, for us to be sanctified in our lives, the process of sanctification. Sickness sometimes is needed. Weakness is needed. The same with 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. If need be, you have been grieved by various trials. And again, trials involve sickness. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perish. Though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Brother Marvin used this earlier too. So what are we saying? The end, okay? The, the end here justifies the means. Meaning, if the chastisement, if the trials at the end will make us holier, will make us honor God, will give us give glory to God with our lives, then that's the purpose of purity. And again, when we say to be found to praise and honor, that's our fourth, um, our fourth point. Praise may come through suffering and sickness for the glory of God. One time, uh, there was this blind person and the disciples, or the rabbi, uh, you know, people around him ask Jesus Christ. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. So that the works of God should be revealed in him. Again, in John 11 verse 4, when Lazarus, uh, the, the, the friend, the beloved, one of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus heard that, He said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So sometimes sickness is used by God so that when you go through the process of healing, and if God indeed will heal you, then His name will be glorified. And we've seen that happens many times. We've seen that happen many times. People who had cancer, people who overcame uh, dreadful diseases, and later they would testify, like what we heard earlier, they would testify and said, Praise be to God. God is glorified. And then people around would say, If God can, can heal Him, then we have hope. But you see, you must give God a good reason for Him to heal you. So, again, we end. Use discernment when you pray. Use discernment when you pray for someone, when you pray for yourself, if you are sick, or when you found out that you are terminally ill. Use this discernment and ask God. But also, if you are to make an appeal to God, give Him a good reason why He must spare your life and heal your sickness. The question is, can God? Of course He can. But will God? Then only God knows. And again, you know if you deserve to be healed. Thank you for being with us. May you have a great weekend ahead of you. Uh, this weekend is Martin uh, Luther King Jr. week. And again, He's a Baptist minister, by the way. And because of him, we have the, the freedom, the, 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 uh, you know, the rights that we have uh, living right now. So thank you again. Be with us uh, next Friday. And uh, may you have a wonderful day in Christ. God bless you.